Now skeletal derivatives of the first pharyngeal arch. In the first pharyngeal arch, you draw alongside with me and please keep on noting down the points because sometimes you are asked with this question, write a short note on skeletal derivatives of first pharyngeal arch only. So therefore, in the first pharyngeal arch, now entire first pharyngeal arch will be divided into ventral and dorsal component. The ventral component will be represented as the mandibular process. So here, I will draw here the mandibular process. Note down, this will be the ventral component. Ventral component, now here I will mention on this side, the first pharyngeal arch in which I will mention here the ventral component, ventral component of the first pharyngeal arch. In the ventral component, it is known as the mandibular process. What about the dorsal component of the first pharyngeal arch? The dorsal component of the first pharyngeal arch will be known as maxillary process. And if you recollect, we have discussed this entirely during the development of splanchnocranium. But here we need to mention once again in detail. So please note down. Now here, the first pharyngeal arch makes it the ventral component, mandibular derivative, that is called mandibular process, the dorsal component is called maxillary process and the cartilage of the first pharyngeal arch is called Meckel's cartilage. Please note down, maybe ask, write a short note on Meckel's cartilage, this is a short note. So Meckel's cartilage is the name given to the first pharyngeal arch cartilage. What will develop from Meckel's cartilage? Ventral component is mandibular, dorsal is maxillary. Now, from the mandibular component, once again, this mandibular component will be present in such a way that it will have a dorsal end and ventral end. Now, note down, keep on noting down, the dorsal most end of the mandibular component will develop into one cartilage which will later be converted into a small bone which will be known as, so here, I will make that bone and that bone will be known as the malleus. So please draw this, this malleus will be derived from Meckel's cartilage, the first pharyngeal arch cartilage, but from which component? Mandibular component. Which side? The dorsal side. So this cartilage will remain, be chondrified, ossified as malleus. So therefore, this structure will be known as, here I will just write it down as malleus. Similarly, in the intermediate side, from the intermediate part of the Meckel's cartilage, the entire cartilage will disappear except its perichondrium, except its outer sheath. That outer sheath will remain as, if you recollect, we have discussed with the de development of splanchnocranium, that will remain as the anterior ligament of malleus and spinomandibular ligament. So two ligaments, anterior ligament of malleus and spinomandibular ligament anterior ligament of malleus and spinomandibular ligament that will be from the intermediate part of Meckel's cartilage that is absorbed. It will remain in membranous form but this membranous form will be converted into anterior ligament of malleus and spinomandibular ligament. So please note down these two. They will be known as anterior ligament of malleus and spinomandibular ligament and here anterior ligament of Malleus. So please note down these two structures and the ventral most component, the ventral most component will be absorbed and it will remain as membranous. These membranous structures will be ossified. So therefore the ventral component of Meckel's cartilage will disappear. That cartilaginous part will disappear and it will remain in the form of membranous ossification. So therefore, from membranous ossification of the ventral side of Meckel's cartilage, the entire body of mandible will develop. And therefore, this is known as the body, the entire body of mandible. Please remember, the entire body of mandible, including the ramus of mandible, will be membranous in ossification. And what will remain as cartilaginous? Two structures in mandible will remain cartilaginous. Number one, where my fingers are there there will be mental ossicles that will be cartilaginous and number two there will be inside the mandible there is mandibular foramen where there is presence of lingula that will remain as cartilaginous otherwise the entire mandible will become membranous so therefore 
These are the structures that are derived from mandibular component of first pharyngeal arch, Meckel's cartilage. Now remember maxilla. This was the maxilla was the dorsal component. What will develop from the maxilla? If you recollect splenocranium, from maxilla, the dorsal part of the maxilla will develop into, here I am going to draw here, and this structure, as I draw, you will understand, that structure, if I draw here, similarly here, I will just rub this, so that I can have some space to draw here, and that structure, which I draw, will be known as incus. So please draw this incus. Therefore, this will be known as, here I will write it as incus. That is second year of cycle. So the dorsal part of the maxillary component of first pharyngeal arch will develop into incus. What about its ventral side? The ventral part of maxillary component. The ventral side of maxillary component will develop into membranous ossified bones which are the bones which are derived from the membrane of the ventral side of maxillary component that is the bones developing as a result of intramembranous ossification once again recollect pre-maxilla, maxilla, nasal bone, zygomatic bone then the palatine bone and warmer these are the bones of the facial skeleton which will develop as a result of intramembranous ossification membrane bones, they are called membrane bones but from which side? from the maxillary component. Which side of maxillary component? Ventral side. What about dorsal side of maxillary component? Incus. Here, please note down this maxillary components, whatever I have discussed with you. Here we finish our first arch skeletal derivatives. Now we come up with second arch skeletal derivatives. Once again in the second arch skeletal derivatives, I will use different color. Second arch skeletal derivatives, I will use here green color, no I will use here blue color. They are again divided into dorsal and ventral component. As we had divided first arch into dorsal and ventral, same way the second arch will be divided into dorsal and ventral. Now in the second arch derivative, for example here, I will write here as second arch, which will be known as Reichert's cartilage, please note down the second arch cartilage is called Reichert's cartilage, R-E-I-C-H-E-R-T-S. This also we have discussed during the development of spinocranium. So Reichert's cartilage, this is the, this will be also known as hyoid arch. Remember this will be known as hyoid arch and that first arch is also known as mandibular arch. This one second arch is called hyoid arch or Reichert's cartilage. Now dorsal and ventral component. From the dorsal component of Reichert's cartilage, from the dorsal component of the second arch, the structure that will develop will be, there will be development of stapes, the third year of cycle. So here, once again, if I create some space here, in the stapes, I will draw here, this portion will be known as the stapes. This is what I will draw here. Once again over here, I will draw the stapes from the, which side? From the dorsal side of the second arch, pharyngeal arch. And therefore, here I will mention this as the stapes. <coughs> then there will be one more structure that will develop and that will be known as, if I just put it here as styloid process. Here also I will just put it as styloid process, so this will be the second component, styloid process from the dorsal end of second pharyngeal arch. Third component will be, there will be presence of, put this as a ligament. So this will be known as the stylohyoid ligament. This will be the dorsal component of the second pharyngeal arch. Therefore, now we continue with the stylohyoid ligament. This stylohyoid ligament will be connected to the smaller cornu of the hyoid bone. So therefore, let me draw this smaller cornu of hyoid bone here and here. Then this smaller cornu of hyoid bone will continue as superior surface of the body of hyoid bone. And therefore, now I close this as the superior surface. This much will be the ventral derivative of second pharyngeal arch. 
Remember, second pharyngeal arch, Riker's cartilage or hyoid arch, these are the synonyms. So, what are the total derivatives of second pharyngeal arch, Riker's cartilage or hyoid arch? They are divided into dorsal and ventral component. Dorsal component will be step is styloid process, styloid ligament, and ventral component will be smaller cornu of hyoid bone. So, once again, we have to name this as smaller cornu of hyoid bone and superior surface of body of hyoid bone. This is the fifth derivative. So three derivatives from the dorsal part of the Rikert's cartilage or hyoid arch or second pharyngeal arch. They are stepes, styloid process and stylohyoid ligament. And two derivatives from the ventral component of the hyoid arch. That will be smaller cornu of the hyoid bone and superior surface of the body of hyoid bone. Here we finish our skeletal derivatives of second pharyngeal arch. It can be asked as an independent short 